and welcome to Breaking It All Down. I'm Count Zero. This is going to be a slightly different episode from normal. I know I promised the next episode of the show was going to be the review of Splinter Cell Conviction, and that's coming. But I wanted to do something in response to the ruling by the United States Supreme Court that the, the California's law forbidding the sale of video games, to, of violent video games to minors, is unconstitutional. I wanted to say something about that. I wanted to get something out there. And I'm, I'm normally not going to be political unless something really big comes up. But this is something special. We gamers kind of knew this was coming. Over the eight years that this case has been making its way through various state appeal courts, state supreme courts, district courts, all the way up to the United States Supreme Court, this law had been regularly overturned for being unconstitutional, for too much um, restricting free speech. And finally, we have a ruling, and what a ruling it is. The majority opinion was written by Justice Scalia, and basically says this. I'm not going to do exact quote, but it is that if speech is, is harmless, if speech cannot influence people, then this isn't the purview of the Supreme Court. It shouldn't have gotten this far in the first place. It could have been taken care of well below this. There would have been no, there would be no question on this issue. It would fall under the obscenity rules, much as with videos related to the quote unquote crush, crush fetish. Um, if you want to know what that is, look it up on Wikipedia. Don't image search that. Just just don't. You'll be you'll be happier happier if you just stick to Wikipedia on that. Um, but if this is something that is capable of influencing people, and thus there is a question on this. The court has to rule that it is that it is protected and merits the same, yeah, basically the same protections, the same consideration that books, movies, paintings, music, and for that matter, um, to a certain extent, protesters deserve. To a certain extent, that protesters deserve. So. So this is this is amazing, and spelling it out in this fashion sets a wonderful precedent in favor of other mediums as well that haven't had the same degree of challenge. Tabletop role-playing games, for example, they haven't necessarily had to do this sort of uh, court fight in the past. Um, but to be honest, we've never had a case of a town or state trying to ban the sale of role-playing games as a malign influence to people, thus allowing us to have that sort of challenge. But this doesn't precedent for that. There is, isn't quite a Supreme Court precedent for comic books, but this does that as well. In fact, the amicus brief by the Comic Book Legal Defense Fund is cited in Scalia's um, opinion. So, comic books count towards this in terms of for what they're talking about, which also means manga is protected by this, some protected by this. Now, we're not, now, not to say that Lolicon manga is going to totally get um, off, uh, get off on this, as far as for cases like the Handley trial. Um, it didn't make it this far, so I don't know how that would have played out here because of the fact because because of laws against pedophilia and that sort of thing but th this is impressive I mean you want to make a comic now about gay romance and they try and some place tries to ban it you can point towards a, you have a Supreme Court ruling that you can point to saying that you're safe if you're tr if you're running a tabletop role-playing game store and for some reason the value the prevailing authority of a town or whatever your community tries for some reason tries to block you or pass laws trying to, to restrict your operation because of the horribly corrupting material that you sell. You have a court argument to argue um, to help you argue your point. So this is really impressive. Um, now one of the other opinions on this written by the courts suggested that there might be possibility for basically doing a rewritten version of the law. Um, 
And this led to Senator Leland Yee, who's currently running for, of all things, mayor of San Francisco. Um, not in the sense that, I mean, it's the, that no one would want to become mayor of San Francisco as far as somebody this... This think of the children -y and this this very morally conservative person. I mean, if you're based on the arguments of this and his very think of the children's attitude, I can't imagine him wanting to run for mayor. Imagining him, can't imagine him fitting him well as the mayor of the city with the most, with possibly the most visible nationally gay population on the entire pl uh, in the United States. Um, his argument uh, and statements he released after this said, oh, well, we can write a new law and send it back through again. <sighs> and so I'm going to do a quick aside here after my joy and ecstasy before to do a quick aside to Leland Lee. Senator Lee pos um, and mayoral candidate Lee. Over the past eight years, the State of California, which admittedly is a state I don't live in, so I'm not one of your constituents, has spent a colossal amount of money in such tight economic times to fight a law which, nearly as I could tell, aside from its moral protective stuff, only would really do much to harm the economy. You've spent money that could have gone to pay serv pay for services in California. You've spent money that could have been used to, or th that was belonged to the people of California. That was should be used to better their situation, to improve roads, to improve schools, and that sort of thing. All of this to fight a law, which you were repeatedly told violated the Constitution of the United States of America. That violated the spirit and the letter of the United, of the Constitution of the United States of America. And yet you pushed it anyway. And as you run for mayor in a city which has a substantial number of game journalists, game companies, and technology companies based in it, or around it in the Silicon Valley area, once again, you say, hey, let's try it again. Let's adjust the wording of the law so we can try and get around this, but still essentially try to pass the same law, saying, still, why don't we just think of the children? Why don't we just think of the children? We must protect them from these games. Because... In your eyes, the parents aren't qualified to do this. Because in your eyes, it is the state who should be doing this. And the state should be spending taxpayer dollars on this. And you want to limit the creativity of people to do this. And also, in, in the process, cause financial harm to companies who have games already out that would be affected by this. And retailers who have purchased stock that is on shelves that would be affected by this. I just... I don't know what you're thinking. I mean... Near as I can tell, you want to... Protect... You want to make the state... Be totally in lieu of the parents, no matter what the cost to the state and to the people of... The country, or at least the state of California, are... Is. So... I don't know what's wrong with you, but I'm not going to sport the old cliche of the definition of insanity as trying the same thing multiple times and expecting different results, because for starters that definition is incorrect, and it's a dumb cliche, and I'm not trying to say you're insane, but what I am trying to say is that maybe you're going about this the wrong way. There are certain cases where I'm in favor of bigger government, in protection of people with disabilities, in protection of minority groups. But, but if you want to protect children from violence in the media, there are better ways to do it 
than passing awkwardly done laws to try and do this. And I don't, I mean, education's better. In fact, you applaud in your statement the uh, EMA for, and the ESRB for further educating parents about what the ratings mean. And there's plenty to go there, but you, there's got to be a better way to achieve your goals than spending millions of taxpayer dollars on a court case which seems predestined to loss. I mean, the ruling was 7-2 to two against you. Which means, even if your next law, you word it in such a way that you get two more people on your side, there's still another, sheesh, there's still another five people on the other side against you. So, unless you, this, uh, so, there's got, I, mean, I don't know what you're thinking. But I think you should drop this. I think you should drop this attempt to legislate your way to getting this done. You're not going to listen to me on this. I'm not your constituent. I'm not in your state. But hopefully someone in the California state government will, or that some people in your state will echo my statement here. That this isn't the way to do this. And hopefully in your running for mayor in your run for mayor of San Francisco, and as you think about the results of this court case, maybe this will affect your opinion. I don't know. I hope it will. So, with that said, next time will be business as usual. I will have a review of Splinter Cell Conviction, and will be and that'll be next time. After that, I'm shooting for having a book review together, and we'll see how book reviews on video turn out. Until next time. I'm Count Zero, and I'll see you then.